Voters last year approved the creation of a new independent ethics commission by a nearly three to one margin. But exactly how that body will be set up and function is still largely unknown. But this week we got the first glimpse of a plan as Representative Damon Eli introduced House Bill 4. The proposal would give the Ethics Commission subpoena power when investigating governmental wrongdoing. It also spells out exactly what kind of accusations it would have the authority to adjudicate. Correspondent Gwyneth Dolan caught up with Representative Eli this week at the Roundhouse to find out more about the bill and the reaction to it. In the next few minutes, we are going to try and get a handle on how this ethics proposal is shaping up and whether or not it looks like what the voters expect. Right now, we are here with Representative Damon Eli, a Democrat from Corrales. Representative, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. So, Representative, critics are saying there is too much confidentiality in this bill. If the point of an ethics commission is to improve the public trust, how does this bill do that if it allows so much information to be kept secret? So it really isn't. I, we have just a very limited period of time when the information is kept from the public, but it's for a good reason. We want to encourage people to make ethics complaints. I sue lawyers for a living. I've represented judges before judicial standards. I know somewhat about this process works. When people go up to a window, and they say, gosh, Representative Eli may have done X, seems like a nice enough guy, but maybe he did something wrong, I'm not sure. Is all of this gonna be public? If the person at the window says yes, a lot of people will walk away. We wanna capture that person because we wanna get that person to file an ethics complaint. So we're trying to encourage that. Now, once the commission, under the current version of the bill, once the commission finds that there's cause, um, at that moment, this is before there's a trial, it becomes public because now the public has a right to know that it's, somebody's under suspicion. But if it's a frivolous complaint or unsubstantiated, and we're working on other things, fixes for IPRA and those kind of things, but I want to assure the public almost all of the information will be public. It's that initial stage where we want to encourage people to make complaints. And that's why if it's frivolous, then it can still come out, but the commission doesn't get to bring it out. Either the complainant or the respondent, That's, that is the person that made the complaint or the, let's say, legislator that's being accused of wrongful acts, either one of them can decide, I want it to come out. But now the irony of this is that the world we live in is one in which you can put all of this information on Twitter right now. Right. So this is how people are used to operating now. And there's no one to adjudicate any of that on Facebook. So why add all this secrecy when it doesn't exist anywhere else? Well, it, but it does. I mean, for example, judicial standards, literally the whole trial is behind closed doors. It isn't until it goes to the Supreme Court. Um, so if you take that model, if we were to use that model, then it really would be locked behind a closed door. This isn't. We're really talking about, let's say somebody says, you know, I saw Representative Eli take a piece of gum from a lobbyist, okay? And, and I'm worried about that, whatever it would be, something silly. At that point, somebody could say, the commission may want to look at that and say, well, maybe he's doing that with every lobbyist in the building in a way to, that's inappropriate. Well, when you have a person go up to the window and say, I want to make this complaint, is it public? And they say yes, and they walk away, you've lost that opportunity for the commission to actually look at something that if there's a pattern of behavior, could really be a problem. But isn't there a possibility to open it up further if the complaint is frivolous, release it. It was frivolous, who so, cares? So here's what happens. So the check on the commission, it's a good point, but up to a point. We don't want the commission misused. But on the other hand, I wanna have a check on the commission. That's why the person complaining can make it public. So in other words, they make a complaint. Let's say the commission is biased towards legislators. The only check on the commission at that point would be the complainant saying, yeah, that doesn't make any sense what they just did. I'm making the decision public. So we're about the halfway point of the session, and this proposal hasn't been to a single committee yet. Why is it taking so long? So the cool thing is sometimes taking a long time is a good thing. I know people think, well, if you start early, it'll be better. I have early stuff that is way behind where the Ethics Commission's at because it's got three committee assignments. This has got Judiciary and Appropriations, both the appropriate committees. It has a low, low bill number. My, I mean, my current bill numbers are in the 500s. We filed this yesterday, it got House Bill 4. So it tells you how important it is to leadership. This bill's gonna move. The reason there was a delay 
is because I'm talking to so many people. I want to make sure people are comfortable with the process. Part of this whole process of doing this legislation has been to educate people that we want an ethics commission that works, that provides transparency and accountability and integrity, um, while at the same time assuring you know, the people that are subject to it that there's due process built in. And so sometimes that takes a little while, and I, you know, I'm, I'm working very hard, I promise you, on getting this going. We'll end up having another couple of versions, but I think it's going to improve on the bill. Well, we'll check back in with you on that. Please do. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are here on the floor of the House. They've just broken for the afternoon, and we're going to take a minute to talk with Representative Kelly Fajardo, who represents Valencia County. Representative, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. One of the things we're looking at this week is the Ethics Commission proposal, and specifically the idea that these complaints could be kept secret. How do you feel about that? Um, secret's a hard word to say. Um, you know, I was on the task force that helped create the sexual harassment policy here in the legislature on how to deal with legislators who are accused of sexual harassment. We never had a policy that existed. Um, we met I, ten times. We spent hours and hours talking about about that task force and what that would look like. And you know, when, it's hard for people to always come forward. It's hard for people to make a complaint. Um, so the secrecy aspect isn't really secrecy. It's allowing those people who want to make a complaint the opportunity to do so and to protect them and their identity and who they are. You know, I asked Representative Eli, isn't it the case that someone could just make these accusations on social media and then it's all public? But I think I hear you saying you're talking about people who don't want it to be public. And that's exactly right. So we, so you know, we have people who, it's there, there, there's the public social media atmosphere, and yeah, you can do, you can do, go that path. But you know what? They, you can't always take action when you go that way. When you go through the system that this bill is supposed to set up, then action can be taken. And like I said, you know, not everybody wants their name out there. Um, in the beginning, because you know there's, they're afraid of um, retaliation. So, in terms of the public trust, allowing these things to be kept confidential to protect uh, complainants, does that run into a problem with the public trust if they don't feel like they're confident? And that's a great question. So, you know, we've kind of done things in um, a silo within the legislature for years, and that's one of the reasons we're creating this commission, is so that it's not all the silo. So you actually have a group of investigators, we have a commission, so things are being dealt outside of here in the roundhouse. And I'm hoping people feel comfortable with that. Are you hearing from constituents about this proposal? Um, I am. So on the ethics commission, people are very excited about it. As you know, it passed, um, you know, seventy percent. And so I am hearing a lot of. Inf I'm hearing, you know, people want it. It's time for it. You know, other states have it. Um, and now we're waiting to see what it looks like because now we have to create the enabling le legislation after the voters talk. Now we got to put it into action. And Mr. President, uh, to date, the state has received two hundred eight point nine million in federal awards. Senator Richard Martinez. Everyone we've talked to today seems to agree that this ethics legislation is great, everything about it is great. If this is so non-controversial, why did it take so long? Uh, to be truthful with you, it was very controversial many years ago. I mean, this bill has been uh, looming in this roundhouse for many, many years. I wasn't totally for it either, but I am for it now because I think it's something that we need and we've been studying it for quite some time. I think an ethics commission is needed, but I also think that we need to keep some, some things out of the ears of the public. So I don't think we should make everything uh, 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 that goes on in the commission uh, to be known to the public. So I'm thinking about police investigations or the Catholic Church investigating accusations. And the problem that we see is that the public sometimes feels skeptical because they haven't been in on it, that something has been covered up. Are you running a risk that the public won't be satisfied if things are not made public available to them? Honestly, I think that uh, we're, that we're working on the bill and so it's going to be so tight and so good that I don't think that the general public is going to have any uh, questions of that nature. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you. So from what we heard today, lawmakers think they've got this Ethics Commission bill well in hand. The Speaker of the House told me it has to happen. It's a priority. It's going to start moving. 
That means we expect it to be heard in two House committees where the public will have a chance to give input. And of course, we'll be following it through the session.